sure one of the videos that is circulating, uh, one of our members of parliament raised these issues at parliament during the, you know, um, PAC uh, or the, you know, Parliamentary Accounts Committee sitting, uh, challenging the Minister of, uh, you know, Education, Permanent Secretary, why they found themselves in, found themselves in that situation. But as it were, the UPND just fight themselves on every issue that the Zambian people raise as a concern. So we are in a situation that we witnessed in 23 where, 2023 where the UPND are not ready to face their demons and be able to, uh, to deal with their challenges. They are just fighting everything. Moving forward to 2024, as a patriotic front, uh, yes, from a political point of view, we have had um, the UPND, Ms. Akainde uh, Chema, I think advised and granted or given a wrong script to follow, uh, which I think he pronounced when he was on the copper belt that he would begin to um, engage in the, what he called Mingarato. There is a cliche uh, that has existed from the time um, of UNIP and then multi party democracy and MMD that politics are dirty. Uh, and I think the Mr. and the UPN and have taken it literally and believe that. Uh, Politics about being, you know, crooked. You have to use under, you have to use under methods uh, for you to be able to first of all advance your political fortunes or sustain, in this case, your stay in government. Mm. There was so, a question that was asked to both the president and the and the vice president during vice president question and answer. Uh, whether you know the state has got anything to do with the confusion within the patriotic front, both the president and the vice president distance themselves uh, from your confusion. Actually, the president says that it's, the PF ought to deal with its own confusion. You know, Ms. Aka and Lema, when he says good morning, you should look at your watch twice to just confirm whether what he's saying is actually something he means. Uh, because uh, his uh, record of uh, telling, uh, you know, half truth if not lies, is um, one that as many people have confirmed. On all the things that he has pro pronounced so far, uh, most of it has been found that, that it is actually, you know, uh, can, is said to be false. Uh, he basically plays uh, politics on the basis of uh, believing that uh, the people he's talking to, who he can get away with the misrepresentation. Uh, for example, he says, when I am inaugurated at 10 o'clock, by 14 hours the donor will then, you know, again, it will be somewhere around uh, a slight above 10 kwacha. Today we're talking of the dollar being at 26 kwacha to, I mean the kwacha being at 26 kwacha to a dollar. Uh, only speaking to the fact that it is debunking his promises. He then s made a promise that uh, this whole nonsense about uh, minimum costing 90 kwacha under PF and uh, the highest price being 115 that time says when I get into government, the minimum, minimum price will be at 50 kwacha. Um, as it were, minimum it, has, it is at 320 kwacha. And when we challenge government on those facts in relation to their promises and what the reality is, then they start telling you, you're being irresponsible. What has happened now is that people are being more responsible in terms of expenditure. No, people are failing to meet their obligation on a monthly basis. Mm. What, about, what, about, what about some of the promises that they managed to achieve? Would you call him an honest man? Well, you have to educate him. Which promise? Like the introduction of free education? The NAPSA partial withdrawal? Those are the, uh, the, the campaign promise also was to deal with the debt challenge, managed to restructure the debt. 98% of our creditors have agreed. Let me start with the free education. It's a scam. The, re the reality and the effect of what the UPN are doing in relation to quality education for our people, 
will be more telling 10 years from now, 20 years from now, in terms of the quality of the workforce or the cadre of people that would have been produced out of that educational system. Because they have flooded classrooms with, uh, yes, children in the name of free education, but they have not been able to put measures in place to guarantee quality education. Teachers today, outside being intimidated and threatened that if they complain publicly or otherwise, their jobs are on the line, they're just enduring, um, don't have the tools to be able to manage now the ratios that are totally abnormal. Under normal circumstances, remember that under Patriotic Front and even before, there was an, uh, an effort to reduce that the teacher ratio, um, uh, pupil ratio, uh, you know, uh, rate should be that at least one teacher should be able to teach somewhere around an average of 40, you know, pupils so that they can be able to give the necessary attention, concentration to build because it's not just about going on the, on the chalkboard. You don't even have any chalk because Today, because of the so-called free education and the removal of PTA funds, most of the schools are not able to even provide just simple things like chocks, because the government has no capacity to be able to grant to give grants or money um, equivalent to what they were generating, uh, what the schools were generating in relation to the agreement between the school and the but you parents. Don't, you don't see it as a step in the right direction that. Somebody thinks of anything a child that, who anything that is undertaken, mm. anything that is undertaken in a reckless manner, never produces, you know, good result. It only, you know, in the end ushers into a realm of disaster. The so-called free education is a disaster. For now, people because they are able to, either out of irresponsibility, or just patronage we say oh our pupils are going or our children are going to school what eventually will become the effect and irreversible effect is the quality of uh, you know the cadre that will produce in terms of uh, graduates at grade 12 uh, for example graduates at uh, we can't even talk about the you know, mm -hmm. university because if the quality of pupils or you know, children that come out of primary into secondary school is poor. You, uh, they are what, damaged. Already. What kind of quality did you invest as Patriotic Front into education that you seem to say is not there today? First of all, our emphasis, the, syst the educational system that we had put in, in place, and I think moving forward, I wish uh, we had been able to forewarn each other that have actually brought you know, the booklet in terms of our manifesto to speak to that. But at least from off the cuff, what I can say is that we had put a system that emphasized that we're going to invest heavily in infrastructure. That's how come for the past 10, for the 10 years that we're in government, uh, Patriotic Front emphasized the need to put up schools across the country. Uh, we were able to put up secondary schools in every district, primary you know, schools in numbers in every district and every constituency. Because one, you have to have infrastructure. You know, second step is to make sure that you recruit, you know, you know, qualified teachers at all levels, primary to secondary school. And then eventually enroll pupils with the standard that I talked about. And because you are focused on quality, uh, unless you also are building the aspect of quantity by getting, you know, facilities available and putting up schools and so on, there is always in a society an element of those that are vulnerable who cannot contribute the bit that you, you put in place. Hence the aspect of encouraging that the private sector come in. Private sector, there are those who would want to provide you know, uh, services, which is uh, top grade services, 
to which those who are affluent are able to access. But there are others who are into philanthropic activities and therefore are able to provide the, what would be termed free education through community you know, schools. We should not shy away from the fact that the poor you always have and therefore there must be mechanisms we provide to accommodate without compromising the aspect of quality education mm. because what will guarantee the progression and you know development of a, a, a nation and a society is the quality of the, your labor force. If you compromise that, you can never, you can never be able to... Honorable, one would argue with you that perhaps your education education system was much more compromised than the UPND because if you make comparisons with your budget, the PF budget, uh, the last five years that you are in office and the first three years of the UPND in office, there's much more allocation to the budget, you know, for, for the UPND. Uh, also, one would argue to you, with you, Honorable, tonight that what you did to the students at the University of Zambia and at the Kobe University was unprecedented because you removed meal allowances that is reducing the quality of education that one should have especially at the highest uh, level of education when the UPND came they restored meal allowances for the students both at Unza and Sibi I think you've gotten we've gotten it all mixed up if you want to argue the aspect of tertiary education separate it and then let's discuss it uh, tertiary education actually the policies that we're implementing as patriotic front were transitioning from bursary to student loans. Student loans basically were, um, it was a fund that was to be, you know, put in place or created so that the, you know, a, a student will have a, an option. If they have capacity, they can sponsor themselves. If they don't, they go and contract a loan, which will be basically an you know, revolving fund, because government at any given time, even now, has no capacity to be able to provide bursaries for all vulnerable, or vulnerable, you know, you know, students in university. That's a reality. But as it were, the UPND deployed the propaganda against that, and they have found themselves trapped into a situation they cannot sustain. Globally, go to Europe, go to. Uh, you know, the East go to, you know, some, you know, countries on the continent that are, have implemented the aspect of student loans. They have absorbed more students uh, to be able to, uh, you, know, uh, you know, access in tertiary education because basically the power and the choice to access that fund lies not with government but with the student because it's a choice mm. that you have to make. I will be able to get uh, uh, this facility, you know, get into education, and therefore when I graduate and I get employment, I start doing my business, I'll be contributing back to pay back that uh, particular fund. And that sense of responsibility, it is necessary for the citizen. The Misaka in the Ichirema, unfortunately, because the at the time that uh, our uh, population uh, how was... How consultative was this decision that your government had made at that time? No, because no, I remember consultation when, was... When, when, when then Minister of uh, Higher Education, Professor Nkandilu, were, you know, banned, uh, I mean, scrapped off meal allowances, there was protest on the copper board, and right here in Musaka, the, the, the students the, protested. The issue of consultation, maybe that's a debate for another day, but I can tell you that uh, the students, some of, you know, the student leaders and students at the time, had were the ones who were even proposing and initiated the dialogue and discussion that around meal allowances should be scrapped. You know, meal allowances should, scrap, should be should be scrapped off because the the number of students that had access to buzzer were very few, compared to the fact that if you opened it up and gave them the power to make a choice, you know, and say, okay, for me I can get a loan only to pay school fees, but I can feed myself, or I can pay school fees. Can I I have a loan only you know, to package, you know, taking care of myself well as at, at university, you know, at the university. And the packages would be at least an option for the students to make, to make a choice because they would determine how much they would want to bind themselves or be committed, obliged to pay 
when mm. okay, let me ask this question on about uh, uh, on about Nakachinda. when you win elections in 2026 you intend again to scrap off these mail allowances which have been restored well I, I can only say to the effect because I don't have the clear uh, position in terms of articulating the the the, the, the manifesto is that I can only speak to the fact that obviously the manifesto, the one that we had proposed to the Zaman people between 21 and 20, 2021 and 2026, is under revision and we're still tweaking it. Uh, by 2025, I think when we've concluded that all our process, but, but we'll be able I'm, to I'm, I'm speaking to you personally as, 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 as Honorable Rafa Nakachita. You don't believe uh, that students should, have, should be given money every three months to, to feed themselves? As an individual, I can tell you that the student should be given money, but it should not be free money. It should be money that uh, when they have completed uh, you know, their tertiary education and they get a job, they should pay back so that they also can have a sense of ownership to have uh, you know, sponsored another child that uh, is emerging. There is no citizen of the who's patriotic, citizen of the public of Zambia that is, you know, that is patriotic, that would find it difficult that after they have gone through the meal themselves and they are privileged to get a job or do business because they now have the skill, would not want to contribute to be taken to get another student getting the university, unless you have just tried to explain it. Mm. We're still discussing the future of the Patriotic Front and some of the solutions that the Patriotic Front has to the current economic prevailing challenges that the people of Zambia are passing through. We take our first set of commissions and we're back. We continue with the conversation. Well, thanks so much for still staying with us. The con conversation continues and uh, we are uh, officially open. The phone lines can come through and uh, be a part of the program. Honorable Nagachinda, you have been in and out of court uh, from last year. Obviously, uh, the court process are going to continue even into this year for party ownership. And obviously, the big question is, do you have confidence in the justice system of this country to give you the desired ruling that you want as a patriotic front led by President Edgar Lungo? I think we can only, in this case, um, uh, express our desire that uh, the principle of the separation of powers um, between or among the three arms of government is adhered to. We know that Mr. Kandetri and the UPND uh, his appetite to mingle and interfere with the judiciary is very high, and we have evidence to that effect. The desire to mingle and interfere with the legislature uh, or parliament is very high, and we have evidence to that effect. You mind sharing the evidence? Well, in, in this case, this is not a platform for it, but uh, we are still, you know, expressing confidence. Uh, in the Chief Justice, who is the head of the uh, judiciary and the judges there, that uh, no matter how m much effort is applied to try and polarize the judiciary, they must still be within the judiciary remnants that will stick to professionalism, ethics, and the rule of law, and just apply the law as it is. Uh, regardless of uh, the issues and matters that are presented before them. Uh, the executive, through the president, has been making a lot of pronouncements, pronouncements that I never expected to be made uh, in relation to how the judiciary should conduct itself. Um, uh, and to some extent, we've seen that uh, the conduct of uh, judicial officers has been one that seems to be you know, aligned with the pronouncement of the executive, which is very worrying. Uh, just across the borders in DRC, when we look at uh, the uh, DRC and the, his history and the current situation there, I think we can say Zambia is more stable, expected to have more organized systems and institutions of government compared to that jurisdiction. With all that confusion, the executive through President Chisakedi tried to move and intimidate the judiciary there. Uh, and there were two, two
two or three lawsuits that were presented to the judiciary. The judiciary rose to the occasion and made decisions that were seemingly controversial, not in favor of the executive, but stabilized the, process, the society, you know, um, and led to what we are seeing now. We are yet to interrogate the pronounced result of uh, the election. But all I can say that the judiciary played their role to make sure that the DRC remains stable. Mm. The judiciary has a duty here to make sure that the rule of law prevails. The issues around the patriotic front, save for political interference, they are straightforward. You, I, saw, I heard in your introduction trying to suggest that uh, Mao Samp and the, uh, some cronies around him held a conference. I think your conscience and uh, just you as an individual know there was, there was no such a conference that was held. There was uh, something really that was a total joke. Somebody who is not even a member of Patriotic Front issuing a notice that there will be a retreat on the 24th of uh, October, the day of Indi celebrating our independence. And then uh, all of a sudden, police and institutions of government swung in action. One. To, the police were, before even that so-called retreat that it converted itself into a conference uh, was held, individuals' fingerprints were being processed for purposes of wanting to change office bearers. It can only be that this is a sponsored you know, activity. And the, we live in the same environment. We didn't expect that the judiciary would even make some of the decisions that have been made so far. We went to court to stop that illegality and uh, uh, an activity that has the potential to create anarchy in this country. At first value, you know, a decision which was a correct decision was made to grant an injunction so that issues are surrounding PF issues can be studied properly because there was no uh, irreversible damage that will be occasioned by to Mao Samba. You understand? He went to have an activity which was inimical at least to the members and the leadership of the party at the time. What was surprising is that uh, it was an application ex parte, injunction granted. And there was even a date set for inter party hearing. Before that date that was set for inter party hearing came, to the shock of everybody, an injunction has been vacated by another ex parte application. You understand? And the reasons granted were a bit, uh, you know, challenging. Maybe what should have happened at that particular point, because there was an, a dead set for inter party hearing, maybe it was to abridge the time and say, okay, instead of waiting for that particular date, I'll bring it closer. Can the two parties come? and be heard if they were comparing reasons for which the other party said, can you move quickly? That didn't happen. You believe there's but a, there's of course, a we underhand. can discuss further because mm -hmm. it's a matter that's still in court. Another matter that has to do with Mausamba, which was before Judge Katenekwa, you know, came up and Judge Katenekwa at some point because we went to the church society seeking to understand how the church society, which also has the duty to make sure that uh, the constitutions of political parties that are deposited, they adhere to at least a minimum, uh, to the minimum uh, standard that you can talk about. With the patriotic front, how do you even have the research to start change office bearers? It was going to be shocking for that to happen. When we went to make an application uh, or request that uh, we are given the records, for the first time in the history of this country, the society was actually dragging their feet to grant us or to give us information, even after paying the statutory fees that are the requirement for you to get that information. I personally went to Jack Mwimba as Minister of Home Affairs to challenge him how come this is happening because we got information that there is interference with the Church society. Later on, we went to Akafumba, who was not in office. Later on, we went to another permanent secretary who was trying to 
you know, he was tongue twisted trying to explain himself. Then we discovered he was actually the one assigned to try and prevail over the rich of society to have, uh, you know, office bearers changed. We challenged him, we wrote letters, they never responded to that. When I went to sit with him, he was even now exposing the fact that they were even afraid of the fact that the, the former president has announced that he's coming back. So he's saying, how did the former president come back here to resign? He said, it's not within your purview to start discussing internal issues of patriotic France. Let's, let's speak of first caller from Undola. Thank you so much for joining the conversation. Go ahead with your contribution tonight. Good evening. Good evening to you, Mr. Wallace. Good evening from Ndeke Township here in Ndola. I have a question to Mr. Rafael Nakachinda. Mr. Nakachinda, why is it that your political life is always associated with the confusion? When you were in MMD, you actually sponsored this problem. We had two camps, one for Nevers Mumba, the other one for Felix Mutati. You and Felix Mutati, while you were in MMD, you started working with the Patriotic Front. You were given position in the Patriotic Front, right? The party lost the power. Again, we've got two camps, one for Edgar Lungu, the other one for Mayo Samba. Right? Prior to that, the PF had two conventions before when Sata died. Mayo Samba had one, the other one was for Edgar Lungu. The Edgar Lungu camp went to court and they were given, they were actually recognized. This time, this time, Mayo Sampa had his own confusion and he has gone to court and he has been recognized. And you are saying he has been sponsored. What proof do you have that Mayo Sampa has been sponsored by the UPND? Thank you. Sir, Olas Neji, thank you so much for calling us from Mundola. Would you like to respond to that question? Yes. Uh, first of all, he's, uh, he has asked a very personal question. I don't know how, how I, I should answer. First of all, uh, I was, let me talk about Patrick Front first. I was not in PF at the time that uh, there was a conference in, in 2014, or conferences in 2014. But I've come to learn that basically there was only one conference uh, to which you know, delegates and everybody had been selected and they convened. But I think there was an attempt by the acting president at the time, uh, Guy Scott, to have a candidate sponsored, in this case, Mao Samba. Uh, but I think the, the view and position of the membership across the country expressed the delegates at the, that conference, conference had already you know, made up their mind that their leader and candidate would be President Edgar Chagarungu, and they proceeded. The machination and attempts to try and sabotage that is a subject for another day. Uh, and uh, that's how President uh, Lung emerged. The issue of uh, uh, MMD, I want to challenge you and challenge the media in the Republic of Zambia uh, to call for a meeting because I think there is a distorted narrative that has been advanced for those who want to use that particular matter for personal survival. The issue around 2014-2015, uh, 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 MMD situation, was that after the loss in 2011, uh, there was a conference at the, or convention that was held that elected Dr. Nevers as president. Uh, and uh, when there was an imminent uh, presidential by-election that was to take place in 2014 or 2015 in this case, there was a discussion around who would be the best flag bearer, you know, for MMD, you know, to front for them to be guaranteed victory. And the discussions was around the incumbent at the time, Nevers Mumba, the former president and other, uh, you know, options. And the only unfortunate part is that the incumbent at the time, Nevers Mumba, was not favored in terms of the membership of MMD or the general public. I think the general public seemed to have been 
comparing and contrasting the performance of Mr. Sata at the time as well as Rupia Banda. Mm. And Rupia Banda seemed to have been, you know, you know, favored. It created a situation which some of us at the time were advancing that the incumbent president, Neva Sumumba, and the former president and other stakeholders needed to sit down and look at what would be the best decision the party would make in the interest of the nation as well as the party. But as it were, personal ego, personal interest and so on, you know, you know, overcame or prevailed over individuals more than the interest of the organization mm -hmm. and the party. It's a, a very loaded discussion, yeah. Did which you I it? think mm. I would challenge the media. I think for us to state and put the records clear, we need, because what I've seen is that everybody is misled uh, when it comes to history around UNIP, around MMD, by narratives created by individuals. We have people like Muhavi Lungo, who we can benefit from, because he was involved directly in the transitions in UNIP, but also eventually found himself directly involved in the transitions of MMD. MMD. Mm. And I was personally involved directly in the transitions within MMD from the time of Dr. Nevers being elected president, 2014, and even the events that followed after. The only f challenge I have in this country is that is generally maybe as a people were cowards, because I don't f see how uh, today, like the caller is trying to suggest, Honorable Mutati, who is part of the UPND government today, would sit and the UPND, the president and officials of UPND, would be advancing an erroneous a narrative to suggest that you're sponsored by Patriotic Front and he's seated in cabinet and keeping quiet. Mutati was president of MMD after the 2016 you know, convention. He should be able to answer what transpired. Mm. Mutoro Piri, who's agricultural minister, was vice president to Mutati, and the vi other vice president was Ani Mushachu you know, Chungo. This should be able to, you know, set the record straight and actually explain where was uh, that convention sponsored by PF or not. Then let's come back to the PF issues. Now, when mm. we come to PF issues, mm. and, and, clearly... And, yeah, and, and clearly I want to ask a, a, a very direct question yeah, to you. Before, uh, yeah. we, before we get there, with Mao Samba, the president has, you know, admitted and exposed himself several times. The so-called retreat that converted into so-called conference of less than 200 people, when the conference of you know, PF uh, requires that not less than 6,000 people, because when you look at the provision of the constitution, it provides that uh, at least a minimum of 600 delegates should come from all the provinces. 600 by 10 is what? 6,000. Then you have to talk about uh, central committee members. You have to talk about uh, members of parliament. You have to talk about uh, councillors. You have to talk about uh, you know council chairpersons. They are all captured there as delegates. So it's more than three, three, six thousand. Where you are seated there, in that small hall uh, that is said to be a conference by Mosab, where even three hundred or two hundred and fifty you know people gathered there. The answer is no. So just on that aspect itself, nobody who is sensible and normal in this country can even call that as a conference. Well, so we have to advance now, those, you know, those... Uh, uh, now, those, those, those are matters, things, obviously. The, the are, but let's pick our second caller, Matthew Strongo from Kawe. Mm. Matthew Strongo. Hello? Good evening. Thank you so much for joining us. Go ahead with your contribution. Yes, good evening, Ivana Kachinda. Good evening, good evening. Yeah, my, uh, Matthew Chong calling from Kawe. You are on a point, Ivana Kachinda, because this government, the new Donny government, they promise us a lot. Nothing is being done. Who of law is not working. Even freedom of expression is not working. Even those rangos which they, it is in the PF, they are saying we have got two, two, two parties. No, we have got only, only one camp led by a former president. That Mouthy Sanpa was just elected from the junkies on October 24. 
It's not the origin of PF who elected Mao Zedong. That those were elected by the junkies. So we don't know Sampa because Sampa was expelled and he was defended in the parliament by our Madam Nelly Muti. He was totally expelled from the party. So the, the president, when when he had a, a press conference, he, he was being asked by journalist Chilala, and he refused that, you know, I've got you no know, hands in it. In PF, but the question I can ask he was at airport in Kasama. He refused when Chilala asked him, but in Kasama airport, he, look, he recognized the leader of opposition, Robert Chavinga. The, the question is simple who is he? Who is using Imingalato for PF? He refused so when Chilala. Ask him mm. those questions about Mao Zedong. Thank you so much, Wachongo. Uh, Wachongo, speaking the same language as you, Honorable Nakachinda, he says that there's only one patriotic front. But I'd like to find out from you, Honorable. The Electoral Commission last month did reject nominations of your candidates in the by election, stating that the adoption certificate need, need to be signed by the President and the Secretary General, which is yourself, technically means that the, the Electoral Commission of Zambia doesn't recognize you as SG, neither does it recognize uh, President Isio as president of the Patriotic Front. Who is SG and who is president of the PF? First of all, the mere fact that you have come to that conclusion indicts the ECZ because they have no business with the internal affairs of Patriotic Front. They have no business whatsoever because these matters are still in court. Remember that, first of all, we raised alarm when Misaka in HLM appointed Madam Mangara Zanomisi as chairperson for ECZ, as a commission, you know, chairperson for the commission at ECZ, because she was, and she still is, a UPND cadre. She has never renounced that position. She's a UPND cadre who was campaigning, wearing, you know, UPND regalia in Western Province and some parts of the country. Mr. McDonald Chipenzi. And there's nothing wrong with belonging to a party. You see, there's nothing wrong to belong to a political party, but the moment you belong to a political party, you are in a way precluded or eliminated from holding certain positions because of the fear and threat that you you will be tempted to advance personal interests. This is a is a quote unquote the empire when it comes to electioneering in this country. How would you have a player in the directional process be the empire also? Somebody who has clearly expressed their you know, affiliation to one of the players, then you say, no, be the empire and expect an objective position. We are not questioning the credentials of Madam you know, Mangana Zaromis. She possibly is qualified. She is a renowned lawyer in this country, but she is politically affiliated and a member of UPND. My brother, you know, McDonald Chipezi, is a UPND member, a cadre, who even attempted to stand on UPND ticket in Chiron. Of course, he attempted to turn, cross himself as civil society and started that organization called Gears. We have more information now on the role Gears played than for him to be rewarded, you know, uh, that position in 2020 general elections. Some of the people interact with the with the McDonald Chipenzi privately. He's even boasting that 2026 forget we have already put a machinery in place. Forget PF will not even be anywhere near. Do you know that as we speak today, there is an attempt to undertake the limitations and increase the number of you know you know constituencies in southern, western, and northwestern provinces, and maybe one or two in other. Or provinces just as a way of a cover up, but all intended to make sure that the UPND have a greater you know, number of MPs if they don't succeed to manipulate using this small sample project to manipulate the numbers in parliament and be able to change the constitution. These people are thinking beyond today to reintroduce a one party state and you know. Uh, you know, even increase the tenure of office of um, Mr. Penda HLM. He is manipulating situations. And I'm telling you, you may not like me as an individual, 
But let's look at this country and when it comes and issues to do with democracy. Before you talk about personal interest, you understand? You may not like PF, but I can tell you that uh, uh, what the UPND are doing soon and very soon, UP PF is a victim of their Mingarato. Next it will be the church, from the church to the media, from the media to the general public. The monster we are creating in Misaka in Lechnem and the UPND will soon begin to eat even its own children. Even the UPND now members within the UPND, they can see that the environment within which they are operating in UPND speaks to dictatorship because their voices, opinions mm. and views are not being taken care of. Soon it will extend to the Zambian people. So all we are saying is that let's stop this dictator called Misaka in Lechnem as quickly as possible before this the democracy that we, you know, fought for, and the... Uh, uh, we'll be discussing know, how he intends to stop uh, President Taka in this time. But let's take our last set of commercials on our back. We do the last bit of the show as we also pick one or two calls that are coming from you across the country. share of a half a million kwacha in cool cash and awesome tech gadgets. Grab a Hunter's Dry or Gold, flip the top and SMS the unique code to 4501. Hunters. Life is about choices. Whether we choose to take the first step to get back up after we fall. To be visionaries, innovators, dreamers, forward thinkers, or to be professional. The big and small decisions we make every day have the power to change our future. These are the choices that make us who we are today. Professional Insurance, celebrating 30 years of making the right choices. Professional Insurance, your wise choice. It's time for golden season. Golden time to win. The rules are simple. Place bets on any sports events. Get promotional tickets. Take part in prize draws. It's golden season. Golden time to win. Use the promo code to get your welcome bonus. Guys? We need to upload this one. But this system is not working. Where's this system? We have a dead end. This is already 11.15. Cindy, find us a better network now. Hello. Is that fiber call? Okay. Superman. I told you about Fibercom. How did you know that? It's the best. Oh, it's Cindy. Anyway, she said the day, and you were right. See? Thanks so much for still staying with us. Uh, I'll be taking one or two calls as we conclude uh, the program tonight. Uh, I will not allow you to go, you know, Honorable Rafa Nagachinda, before you can uh, you can give your reflection on the last press briefing that the president had. Uh, well, he disclosed that the year 2024 
you know, is dedicated to economic growth and expansion. Uh, also, he said that 2022 was spent on debt restructuring and opening up the rigidities that existed in the mining sector. Where do you think, really, uh, this government is either getting it right or wrong when it comes to economic management of this country? For a president to spend four hours trying to explain himself and justify what he has done in the last two years and also the last one year, four hours means that he did nothing. At least according to Professor Mumba, he says if a person has to spend an hour trying to explain what they did and what they have been able to achieve, it means that we've done nothing. Debt restructuring. The civil servants and everybody else were mobilized and bust to the airport to go and celebrate something that was not concrete. Later on, we raised the issues, remember, we were discussing with you, and I think uh, Mr. Costomans are here about the fact that this is just a facade to try and do doing the Zambian people. What did we happen? What what followed? IMF, you know, basically disowning the so-called the success of debt structure. The president was boasting about his meeting with Macron and so on and so forth. It means nothing. There's nothing that will come from there. The global economy in the West are preoccupied with the Ukraine, Russia. I know conflict, and we also have a new one, the Israel, you know, Palestine, you know, challenge in Gaza. Um, what we needed and what we expected the UPND to focus on, which was basically the direction we're taking as part of the fund, is that after putting up infrastructure, uh, the infrastructure we put in in all sectors was that we are moving into the direction of inter in industrializing, value addition, and be able to be productive as a country. That's the only answer mm. so what, for our economy to when move When you on. say that nothing is going to come out of the IMF deal, what do you, what do you really mean? There's nothing. They, 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 you you, you can't have a minister. A minister. Ninety-eight percent of our creditors have agreed you know, to, to, to what we're bringing on the table. Well, no, I'm talking to you. This is the first of uh, January of 2024. Mr. Kindle will change his story in the next three months. He'll be just trying himself again. To have him a president, even when it comes to the mining sector, a president telling a minister, save for the fact these are just deals that like on the street, as a way to demonstrate that the left hand doesn't know what the right hand is doing. The president says, Ah, oh, Minister, you are here. Uh, you're supposed to sign that deal. Uh, I think you leave, go and uh, make sure that that deal is signed before this press conference ends. Uh, I want a note that you have signed the deal. What does it say to you as a taxpayer? Is that due diligence? First of all, the minister is not the one who prepares these uh, you know, agreements. It's a technocrat with the other technocrats from the private sector, particularly the company interested to invest. You see, and then further on, you expect that the, the Attorney General's office will be able to scrutinize those agreements. When there is a presidential decree to, decree to that effect, it means that all these processes are sabotaged because the president has even capped. I want before I finish talking, you bring the agreements signed. So Kabul say we just sympathize with him. At that particular point, he's just a zombie getting documents to have them signed. Whether they are scrutinized or not is immaterial because he has, he's watching um, uh, television to see whether his boss is still talking because he needs to deliver a note that we have signed before he finishes to speak. That's reckless. But it's also a, big, a sign of a bigger problem that these ministers and these technocrats are not given the latitude to express themselves and run as professionals. They are being mic micromanaged by the president. Look at the KCM saga. Well, Pan and KCM are, are, are back, you know, they have been given back life. You, you don't, the PF is not excited about this. Which life are you talking about? To live Let's accept that we have a president who is a dealer and a liar. 
if we don't accept the reality we are faced with, we are going to always create a mountain of hope and end up completely disappointed. Ms. Akainde's promises and political, you know, political and economic strategies are fallen on their, you know, flat on their belly. They will not be able to deliver any dividends. Zambians must begin to prepare themselves for a meaningful change from these incompetent and naive politicians who thought that politics and governing a country can be undertaken the same way they were doing in the boardrooms in managing their private you know, uh, businesses, whose source are basically taking advantage of a privatization process. These are not original business people who started from where you can trust that they started from here. Mm. These are people who took uh, advantage of the process. Mm. As we conclude, how does the future of the Patriotic Front look like? Very bright. Very bright. We are glad that Ms. Aka in the in his naivety, undertook this project you know, of these two years of mouse and so on. Because the Zambian people are not stupid. They can see and tell that this is sponsored by him. He may try and reject and so on. And I even see it and laugh. So this man thinks the Zambian people are stupid, eh? That something that the Zambian people know is originating from him, and he thinks he can convince them by saying, Nimulandane, what am I, you know, why do you want to accuse me? You are diso dis basically disregarding the rule of law in Kabushi, in Kwacha, mm. and he said, Nimulandane, I'm, I'm innocent, and you think people know, I mean, don't know? You come and say, I'm not involved in Mausampa. Mausampa up to today, is being protected by the police at home as he moves. Same applies to these con men like Robert Chavinga. Who doesn't know Robert Chavinga? You know, in his private and public life. Is, 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 is he a member of parliament? Is he a PF member of parliament? Of course. I mean, as it were, politics sometimes produces all kinds of things. You understand? And the authorities at that particular time maybe didn't know what I know. And today is the so-called member of parliament. And you're even saying lead of opposition. And the president goes like the caller was saying in Kassam and says, don't be afraid, just continue. Then he goes on a press briefing to refuse that he's not interested in the affairs of patriotic front. Who is he fooling? I want to tell Mr. Kainde Chema, Wadana, there is only one thing. A G project in Jumabweza Sampa. That I'm going to or stop it. I can tell you it will only work towards the campaigning you and finishing you politically. For us, we're sitting pretty because the German people can see and he is totally exposed on this one and many other fronts. The people who have given him a script in his quest to destroy Patriotic Front have given him a wrong script and he's working against him. His obsession over you know, President Edgar Chagarungu, this idea of wanting to frame President Edgar Chagarungu, wanting to go and plant you know, either arms and wanting to go and uh, search his home, suggesting that uh, there are seditious it... materials and all that. You are just making that gentleman popular. This plan to say, let's arrest him, you are just making him popular. And this country is edgy, is... Um, at the verge of eruption in terms of, you know, uh, 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 protesting against the economic situation, those who are in the intelligence and those who are in the security wings prevail on this president that his appetite to use everything and do everything from a political mm -hmm. point of view will only run this country into chaos. We are restraining our members over my Osampa. We'll I can tell you that if it wasn't for the responsibility and the uh, um, uh, restraint that President Lungu and all of us are exerting on our members and sympathizers of Patriotic Front, Mao Sampa's life is at, is at, at risk. We'll Just like now. all those who are involved. We have to go now. But we're saying, thank you so much for let's tonight. not go that way and preserve the peace of this country. Thank, thank you, so thank much you for very much. Us we have to go now. Thank you so much for joining us on this edition, the first edition in the month of January, in the, in, also in the year of.